Good evening, good morning, good afternoon. How's everybody doing? My name is Colin. <laughs> My name is Chris. You gotta be a little quicker because uh, I'm about to finish this Red Bull. <laughs> so, I have had a long day. Um, I'm not gonna go into it because it would take a while for me to explain it. Who would have fucking thought? Long day, it takes a while to go into it. Long story short is uh, I missed the start time for this podcast. Chris was gracious enough to plug me in via Skype mobile. Uh, I am coming back from my place of employment, and nothing really happened this week in games. So instead <laughs> of finding things that we want to talk about on the dumb minutia, because Darksiders 3, like, I just, I don't know about you, like, do you like Darksiders? I don't even, I was so not aware that this game existed and everyone was getting hyped for Darksiders 3, and I, did I just miss the boat? Like, what the fuck Here's is Here's the what's, thing, what's because I'm, I'm a fucking history nerd, is that I, I, I love the Four Horsemen tale itself, but Darksiders, the game, I played it, and it was just like, I don't, I don't get, I don't like this. This is just, ah. Eh. So I, so I, from, like, the very, I mean, like, minimal things I have read, is it's like, the first one was kind of like a Legend of Zelda clone. The second one kind of went open worldy, like before its time. Yep. And then it one ended on a huge cliffhanger. Two didn't make good on the cliffhanger, and now three is coming out. So it's like two is a little jank, but like people are super stoked because they saw potential in the series. So like I can understand why people are hyped. I'm just like, uh, I just <laughs> you're just exuding just, this this aura of frustration and anger. I just don't you right now. understand, like. <laughs> What? Why? There's like been so many other things that co I don't know. It just seems like people are don't have anything else to talk about, so we're talking about this. Okay, so what do you want to see a remake of then? Well, if this is if or a sequel to if not a remake or sequel because you don't like the Dark Siders three aspect. What what what? Okay, okay, okay. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You ready for this? Uh huh. I'm ready. Are you sitting? Down? I'm Are you sitting down. I am sitting. I'm at my computer. So yes. <laughs> Great. So am I. This will be perfect. The game that we need to see a sequel of is a little game called Skies of Arcadia. Oh. So originally for the Dreamcast, they remade it for called Skies of Arcadia: Legends to the GameCube. This game was not great. It was good. It was a motherfucking JRPG. Built out characters. The characters were like, eh, eh kind of one dimensional. But you were motherfucking pirates, and you could have pirate ship battles in an RPG game. And you could fucking shoot a harpoon into things. You fought a giant whale, Chris. I don't know if you fully understand how fucking awesome that was. And one of the guys you get in the game fucking is Captain Ahab, and he has a harpoon arm! He has a harpoon arm. That's what it is. <laughs> harpoon arms ultimate ability like think okay no so now let's dial it back let's dial it back right so open world big big giant things okay do you realize it was dlc you could fucking sell people like think about eve think about like eve online fucking how many people buy fucking just dumb ass fucking ship skins star trek online gets by by doing all that stuff like there's so Oh god, did I just take the wrong exit? No, I didn't. I'm fine. Everything's good. Everything's fine. Everything's good. Everything's fine. It's fine. She's fine. Everything's good. Um. Jesus. Yeah, I did take the wrong exit. Okay, that's fine. This is what happens when you do a podcast totally not operating a motor vehicle. But no, that's it's not like at one all. of the. No, uh, for legal reasons, of course not. Um, it's it's one of those games where it's like it had so many good ideas, and I feel like if you expounded upon them. You could make a classic game, especially with the way monetization is now and, like, all of the stuff that we're seeing in, like, a bunch of other places. So, you know, I 
I think it's um, it's definitely a possibility. But what about you, man? Like, what if you if like that isn't like. I guess the ultimate remake game would, for me for would be Final Fantasy VIII. Right. Like, that's just me. That's just, like, can we just get some fucking cool-ass graphics? But actually, you know what? No. No. Because they're changing Final Fantasy VII, and I don't know how I feel about that. Right. Like, just... God, I sound like such a... <laughs> dumbass. Oh, my... Oh, Jesus. <laughs> they're changing it! <laughs> like, ugh. Well... To be fair, I mean, I think they, I think it'll be okay, but, um, like, I, I see your worry, though, because the problem with it is, like, my remake already happened. Mine was the new Homeworlds, Homeworld Remastered. Oh, yeah, um, yeah, 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 Like, that's what I've always really wanted, and they did a remake of it, and they made a fucking, uh, it was a prequel, which was Deserts of Carrick, which was amazing. It's actually the story about them finding the mothership in the middle of the desert, and it was great. Um, Sick. Uh, and 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 I'm hoping that they'll make a third one like afterward after two now because they're kind of it did really well so um kind of proved there was a base for it um I don't really have a lot of games I wish they there were sequels to or remade because I I don't like remakes that much mostly because mm. I I feel like it, it's kind of what you're saying I feel like there was an original intention. And it, the experience already happened, you know, and, and so... I feel like a lot of that has to do with the timing, too. Like, I feel like certain games, because they're they're like any form of art, like, they are in reaction to everything going on around them. And so, like, sort of taken out of that context, some things do better because you're like, oh, wow, this game was really ahead of its time. And some won't be. Like, some games are, like, very of their time and understand, like, their audience and, like, what people are looking for. And so I feel like that's why some remakes miss is simply due to not being in the context of its contemporaries. Like when you don't have um, a game like Banjo or a game like Mario 64 or all of the fucking platformers going around, Donkey Kong 64 looks dumb. Yeah. But when you look at what everything else was doing, it was still a very fucking popular game. And a lot of people had a lot of fun with it, like myself included. Oh, absolutely. Um, but a game that didn't do that but still wouldn't have a good remake, would be like Jet Force Gemini. So, like, super ahead of its time, but it used N64 first-person controllers. Or, like, third-person controllers. So it's, like, really weird, like, in terms of how it controls. And I think they may have remade that for the Xbox, and I could be completely... Maybe they already did it, and it worked out really well, but I, I'm pretty sure uh, that that's a game that also might not hold up. Yeah. Um, just had, like, <clears throat> like, killing all the tribals. Let's, like, that's a very, like old school style hard game where you couldn't even fight the real final boss until you did some really obnoxious shit. Well, uh, to, to speak about old school games because you were talking about it, because uh, I, I want to get back to that topic, but actually because you said there wasn't anything, did you hear about the new speedrunning record that was set today? Oh, yes, I did. I actually watched it. That is Cheese 05. Yeah. Finally breaking the one hour, 40 minute mark in the Super Mario 64 120 star category. Very, very big deal. That is the most competitive speedrun there is. It's that and Ocarina of Time and um, I would say one of the next most competitive ones is probably Super Mario World 1 is like the other other most competitive one. But I think 64, Mario 64 is the most run game. Well, period. see, so. I, you are way more into speedrunning than I am, uh, clearly. I mean, like, because me, I'm sitting there, I'm like, I, like, I get it. I get why they're competitive and I get how cool it is. It's just my mm -hmm. my thing is I can't watch these old games, man. Like it's just like uh, like super <laughs> like Super Mario sixty four for me. It, I I have so many bad memories with that game because even as a kid I went this <laughs> game is awful. Okay, like I hated it as a kid. Like I I was okay with that creative time. Like I'm not saying I disliked it, but I was never a big Zelda fan. Um, I guess why that's why I'm always sour on Nintendo because I don't get why people are excited. You know, I'm just like, ah. <laughs> but um, that's that's I guess that's a fair point though. I mean, when you really look back at them, like Mario 64 doesn't age well because it was literally the first 3D platformer. Yeah. So you know, it, like the camera work wasn't there yet, yeah. and like there's a lot of things. That don't just, get me like, wrong. Hasn't I, developed. Yeah. I admit, like what it did for game for games industry. I completely admit it was a freaking ahead of its time um like amazing platformer like idea i just eh, you know it, it didn't do it for me like the n64 for me i didn't really get into console gaming until playstation i gotta really be honest with you like we played a little bit mm. here and there but 
Like, I think the biggest game that we played together was probably. I mean, we. I know I played a lot of Jet Force. Yeah. Uh, you, I don't know if you played too much Jet Force Gemini, but Banjo Kazooie. That, that was yes. the game well, that we played a lot of. Banjo Kazooie is just. It was just good. Like that was a. That was solid. Is the way I'll. Yeah. Put it. it it took it took a lot of the things that Mario was doing and added in more than just the I'm Mario. I can jump and kick off walls and stuff and like. So, like, the hat system in Mario is, like, one example of that. So, instead of the hat system, it was all the different power-ups you can get Banjo and Kazooie. Absolutely. Like, the talent trot, flying, the invincibility. So, they, like, expounded on the idea. And it, so like and it also gave you this idea of progression in the game when you unlock this ability. Oh, now he can use his wings better or this shit. I'm like, right. oh, cool. It was kind of a, not, not in the traditional sense, Metroidvania, because you don't use those abilities to access any new areas. Like, like... It, full areas like you do in Metroid, but what it does do is it allows you to access different jiggies that you may have missed on your first run through of a level, so when you get a power up from a later level you can go back and get, yeah. which I always found really cool. That that was something that I really enjoyed doing. I guess just like real quick, because I don't want to dwell on it too much because I've been beaten to death by people way more intelligent about the game medium than myself, but the thing that I speak to in the Mario games and Zelda games and all of those games what Nintendo does so well is they're able to tell a story almost strictly through gameplay. Like, you have a sense of the character, you have a sense of the space, you have a sense of everything, and there's not that much, like, Zelda, you know, there's a little bit of, like, dialogue, but that's not, like, really what you get out of Zelda. You get the adventure. You feel the adventure through the gameplay. Right. With Mario, you feel this, like, sense of accomplishment and, like, um, you know, reward for, for completing this task. And, like, it's so... The controls are so tight that you know it's your fault. It's not like, oh, this game is dumb. At least in my perspective, you know, it's like, shit, I suck. <laughs> like, I right. can do, like, if Mario can do this. I'm just not, you know, executing it well enough. Which, you know, I think even to this day, people can learn from. Like, I still feel like controls aren't looked into nearly enough as they should. Well, be. Because, like <clears throat> games like Super Meat Boy or games like. Um, you know, like, really tight platform controls are still so important. See, I think that's, uh, I, I, I agree with you that Nintendo's very good at doing that. Uh, the thing that I always have a problem with is, like, I, A, the question I'll ask, that, like, just for everyone else, and even you, is that I want to see, well, it's just what I want to see, is that what I'm wondering if in this kind of age that I think Nintendo has kind of fallen off on in the last kind of consoles is... Now with this system that's like, okay, we have a great game that came out, we have a solid hit, right? Can they keep it up? You know, because here's the thing. Mm. Nintendo... Splatoon, this will be a great question. That was the best new IP they put it out in a long time. Yeah. And let's see if they can continue with Splatoon 2. And it looks like they're not straying too far away, so they're not taking risks. Yes. But they're going to deliver on what people want from Splatoon, which I don't think is a bad move. No, it's not a bad move. Brand new IP. I mean, look at Mario Brothers 2. Like, it wasn't like they changed that much. No, like, oh, I don't think you need to change something like, especially a game like Splatoon. You don't need to change it that much. Add a few new types or weapons or whatever, or stuff like that. You know, fine, go for it. But fix the online. Yeah, fix that. <laughs> because if there's anything Nintendo knows anything about, it's on. No, they don't know shit oh, about yeah, it. Yeah, they're, the, they're, the, they're the. No, uh, Chris, I believe they are the kings of online because oh, yeah, you have to buy it. Voice chat with the Switch online. Yeah, yeah, so, because, yeah. you know, and they, they it, it, I love at their fucking press conference, they acted like they knew what they were talking about. I'm like, you guys realize, by the way, you are the last person to this party. And I mean by Xbox One original standards. Like, this isn't like, oh, PS3 like, came out with it and we're like a little late to the party. No, no. Online gaming was happening on Xbox original and you guys are yep. just not there. And even PlayStation... It's happening on PS2. What? They had a fucking... They had a land switch on PS2 yeah. to, like, connect shit up. Like, they didn't have a full uh, network, and they were late to the game. But here's the thing. By PS3, it was there. It was there. Like they, yeah, and PSN existed. Yeah, it existed, and they started to make infrastructure. And arguably now PSN is, is regularly competing with Live. Like, they are competing head-on. Well... Arguably. Well, that's, I think the biggest reason that is is due to their TV selection yes. and the way they've cut into that market. We've talked about that before, but yeah, I that if we're talking about things that piss Colin off in terms of shit, I remember playing Brawl and they were like, "Yo, the Wii's gonna have online." I'm like, "I'm gonna be able to play Smash online. This is fucking awesome!" And it was shit. Yeah, you couldn't choose any modes. 
the laggiest shit in the fucking world. It was not peer to peer. It was over these dumbass. It was peer to peer, but it didn't like. It was just ah. There was no like lag inference. You could only play with four players. You couldn't play one v one. Even if you gave somebody like a friend code, it was like impossible to set up matches. And like even if you were in like near the same building, it wouldn't work. And then and then. To top it all off, Smash 4 online is garbage. Yeah. Like, it's still not good. <clears throat> well, it's like the only stages you have are these Omega stages, which are just FD, so you can't even, like, do any counterplay on your serious mode, the four glory no items. It's like they literally <laughs> looked at the Fox, uh, no items, Fox only final destination, was like, oh, that's a competitive scene. It's like, God fucking damn it! <laughs> like, how many years do we have to raise hundreds of thousands of dollars, continue to bring our game back from the brink of death before Nintendo realizes what the fuck is going on? Well, I think uh, that comes uh. back to, like, look, I think, <clears throat> look, I, I, I don't uh, disagree that Nintendo makes good... I'm also a stupid Smash fanboy. That's fine. And, like, no, way no. not in the realm of normal. No, no, scene. but here's... So, I understand that. Here's the thing, that I think Nintendo... <clears throat> here's the thing. In the DS market, they do a really good job. Even on their online stuff, it actually works okay. Like, it's like, okay, that's fine. But when they're in the consoles, it's like they forget how the DS works. It's like how they forget how everything else works. It's like, oh, well, in this one, you can connect just to, to fucking console to console, or you can connect, like, to this server, and we do that. I'm like, oh, so you mean how every other online system works, but you're not going to use it for your console? And also, oh, you mean a headphone jack, so you're pulling a fucking apple on us, but without the cool shit. Okay, so, yeah. second of all, oh, but you need our phone, like, that, okay, I, I'm just gonna go on my angry rant here, because I hate this when, okay, look, Colin, love you to death, and, and you're not these kind of people, but there are people who love Nintendo too much, okay, and it's like, they don't look at it with it, the, they have the nostalgia, yeah, they have the nostalgia glasses on, and they're like, but Nintendo makes my favorite games, and I'm like, what's your point? That there are developers who make my favorite shit, like the, to <laughs> the, the the Total War series. Okay, I'm a fanboy, and I still say that was sh like Total War Attila. Shit, I think it was shit. <laughs> like I think it was utter shit. I'm like, what the fuck are you doing? This is they literally. It looks like they took the map from Rome Two and grayscaled it, and I'm like, what the fuck is I that? I saw that shit. It, that shit was fucking hysterical. And I saw fifty dollars for it. Fifty dollars, and I'm like, what the fuck? Um. It was a Here's DLC. Biggest, uh, hold on. Yeah, yeah. Hold on, hold on. All I'm going to say is what they've done to Metroid is unacceptable. That's, like, the biggest problem I have with Nintendo right now is, like, one of their best IPs. Yeah. First, we had Other M, which, like, okay, sometimes in a game's life cycle, we won't talk about Sonic. We <laughs> didn't <laughs> still making that's, like, those. probably... There's no speaking of Sonic, considering how it's, like, what started us off in gaming. Literally, like, Chris and I playing Sonic 1, Chris saying, you can't play Sonic 1, and me being like, I must play Sonic 1. It's, like, the whole reason we like games. Like, that was it, the genesis. But what they did to Metroid with Other M and making her a weak female character when she was... Samus Aran is one of those badass motherfuckers. She doesn't say shit. She kills fucking aliens. And guess what? At the end of the day, at the end of the day, she saves the thing that's trying to kill her. You know why? Because she's Samus Aran. She's a fucking bad, bad bitch. Bad bitch. You know You know that Wheezy song where it's like, I only fuck with bad bitches? Well, Samus Aran is what that song was made about. Like, Wheezy was thinking about Samus when making that well, song. Well, they, they make... Okay, and don't get me wrong. That, that was one of my comments about the Switch. I'm like, look... All you you didn't have enough shit to announce. Okay, A, B, what the fuck? C, uh, my big thing was when they talked about, oh, well, you need this fucking app on your phone because, you know, you, and they literally, I think the quote was, you can't just connect it to it. That would cause interference. I'm like, oh, I'm sorry. You mean how PlayStation 4 has a controller that is Bluetooth that you connect a fucking headset into that still works the whole time. And it puts game sound in those headphones via Bluetooth. Same with Xbox One. And I'm saying this. Don't bullshit me, Nintendo. You fucked this and made some stupid thing that nobody needs. Nobody wants. And the thing is, is that's what frustrated me. Okay, I don't like that they didn't make another Metroid. I want them to make another Metroid because it's great. I, I, I don't. 
I don't like that they didn't announce a whole bunch of the other games, but that takes time, development, it could come down the line. This literal thing, there is no reason and no extra cost to have that when every other system has that when you are charging the same amount I would pay for other systems. And yet you cannot provide the basic function function of me using headphones with your system. Like that is it. So so this is the thing that kills me, is that I have there's a headphone jack in the switch. It's not like they didn't put a headphone jack in there like Apple. There's a headphone jack in there. They just don't have a voice client. Yeah. That's all they needed. It's a fucking voice client. Do you know how small VoIP is? Or like even the most basic voice client, like Maybe we are technically Luddites, and, like, we don't understand what it takes to actually, like, connect those things console to console, but I would expect it is not that much different than a very basic peer-to-peer voice client. We're using one like, right now, think... Colin. We're, we're using one. At no, the... we're not. I'm talking so loud, and my nerd rage is so loud, <laughs> and my my privilege is so loud that I can speak to you over. <laughs> and he passes out. No. Um... <laughs> Oh, yeah, something like that. Yeah, but I, I, I get what you're saying. Like, wh- like quite literally, I have three different, uh, like, I have three different chat, like, voice chat things on my computer right now. Discord, Skype, and I have Mumble on here. And I use them all for various different things because, you know, certain games and certain groups of people like to use different things, and that's fine. But I have three of them. They're all free. All the ones I'm using right now are 100% free. And I'm sitting there going... How difficult is it for you to just make a chat room or anything like that? And th- that's one of the things that bugs me is it's just like that is a simple feature. And I know I'm. I, it seems like it's just complaining about nothing, but th- that's an actual issue for me. That literally, as soon as I heard that, I'm like, oh, I'm definitely not getting this. Like, I'm just not. Like, it's just – like. Cause- and, and here's the thing. I think it's sort of this disconnect. We're thinking that, like, when people play online, there's not as much connectivity as when you play, like, with each other. Like, and I think the Switch – was sort of pitched as like a party thing. You know what I mean? Like every commercial had the people bring out the Switch at a party, which I don't fucking get. I don't know what parties you're going to where we're going to play 1-2 Switch. I'm not fucking going. No, Just putting that I out. hate 1-2 Switch. I think it's dumb, man. It should have been a bundle game. It should have been a bundle game. Yeah. It should have no been Wii case. Sports. It should have been Wii Sports, like literally. Oh, God, it would have been so good. Or it's like a Wii Sports-like. Like everybody would have fucking been like, oh, shit, Wii Sports 2. Like they would have fucking bought it. Every, like, 20, like how many millions of copies does that sell that system? Anyway, yeah. the point being is that at the end of the day, it's it's like we still care and like I still love Nintendo for certain things, but I think what your point, what you were bringing up before is that they are not uh, – this is, they're a company. Like, I guarantee you the reason why they didn't want to put that voice chat app is because they want everybody to buy their fucking little Nintendo app. Yeah. Because that shit will probably get them more money. And it'll show that they have, like, a wider install base and they can market that better. Like, it's it's just non-player friendly practices are things that piss me off. And, like, I think that's where, like, a lot of our frustration with that comes in. And let's be fair as well. It's not like Sony and Xbox and, and Microsoft don't do that shit. Oh, no, It's not more at all. like just the most recent case of anti-player, like, well, yeah. things coming in. But here's the thing. I mean, look, I don't mind. Like, when people got up in arms, like, well, you have to pay for online access. I'm like, yeah, 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 Xbox does that. PlayStation does that for Plus and special, like, oh, to use our special services, you pay for that. That's their fucking shit. That is what you're paying for. That's fine. Like, I don't care that you're going to charge me a subscription fee. That's okay. Because, hey, I pay Comcast for my fucking internet. All right? That's fine. That's – I don't care. And people can complain and whine all they want about it. That's totally fine with me. But when you don't provide me with the basic services, why would I pay for your online when I cannot use when – I, when I have to pay again or have to download another thing through my phone, which, by the way – I'm going to ask a question. Is that using my data or what, what the fuck? You just have another thing I have to use that, that's just completely uh, – Who the fuck Who the fuck knows? Nintendo yeah, uh, that, that, the fuck? that's my basic theme with Nintendo though. Like it's literally – unlike PlayStation and Xbox, you can kind of get a read on what's going on because they're kind of – I wouldn't say completely transparent. That is not what I'm going to say, but it's more like they're, <laughs> they're, they're way more uh, out – in forward with their marketing because they want to be in your faces and they want to do this stuff and they're i like i know people that work at playstation i go to the playstation offices for work i've gone to the microsoft offices for work i live in silicon valley um but like they're all there um and the the thing is is that the 
uh, I've gone there. These people want to, they're very engaging. They want to engage an audience. What I kind of feel with Nintendo is they're like, well, we're dark and mysterious and we don't want to reveal anything, but then we're just going to be angry at you when you want to know more, even though we tell you it's great stuff, but we don't prove it. And I'm <laughs> like... Yeah, it's it's just very backwards. And I think it sort of couples with some other topics we've touched on before, which is sort of the, the head leadership is in a foreign country. So it it just doesn't make sense to us, and they're playing mostly to the Japanese market. Yeah. And, like, yes, Sony is sort of the same way, but they've sort of embraced oh, yeah. that. You know, the American market is... After the PS3 started, it, yeah. Actually, I think I think the story is, and, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the story of what happened was when after the PS3 had a disastrous launch, Sony of America actually took over, relaunched the PS3. It did so well that the Sony head honcho said, you guys are in fucking charge now. Like, you guys are just fucking, you're controlling we'll the place. We'll focus on hardware. Yeah. yeah, like, you you focus on hardware. Like, it might have been some internal stuff that we Pretty much Sony of America. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't know. But it, uh, pretty much the idea is that when you remember, you remember the PS3 when it came out with 600 fucking dollars? Oh, like, oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Though, I will say, what, what really got everybody going is when they were like, not only are we going to relaunch it, but guess what's coming out? And everyone's like, what? What's coming out? They're like, Metal Gear Solid 4, bitches. And everyone's like, oh! Of course! There's a million <laughs> Metal fucking... Gear so- Metal Gear. Um, but yeah. Metal Gear. <laughs> God. <laughs> can we just talk... Can we just talk... I have now follow um, the director of Kong Island, who's directing the new Metal Gear flick. Because yeah. he was on Doug Loves Movies, which I love. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to follow this guy on Twitter. Because I don't usually follow people who are not professional smashers. Because I'm a dork. Yeah. But... I now follow Hideo Kojima because he's fucking insane, and his Twitter is amazing. And I also follow uh, the, the director guy, and they have been just, like, going back and forth and, like, talking, sort of little pictures. And I'm just like, oh, I, I need this. I need this movie so bad. <laughs> it looks like it's going to be so good. Yeah. Like, uh, I just wanted to put that out there, that that thing looks like it's going to be actually maybe the first video game movie to do it right. Yeah, I think so, because they shouldn't treat it like a video really? game movie. They should make a – just a movie. Just make a movie. Like, th- like that's the thing with video game movies is that they try to be like, from the hit game. I'm like, no, no, just, just go fucking – this is Metal Gear. And it's like, okay, people will know that this That'd is... That'd be such a sick title, Metal Gear. Yeah. Not Metal Gear Solid, which they'll tell the story in Metal Gear Solid, because, yeah. let's be real, it's the best one. Yeah. It's the the most off-the-rails, not off-the-rails Metal Gear, <laughs> if that's saying anything. I want them to do Metal uh, Gear Solid 2 and then have the lady in the, no! with the bikini in the, in the lawn chair. No! <laughs> <laughs> that game is so nuts! And then, no, oh you'd have God. to have it, like, right towards the end of the movie. You guys can leave the movie theater now. You should leave the movie theater. You've been here too long. And then the movie just starts again. And just be like, oh my God. I just remember when that like happened. And I was sitting there by myself at 2 o'clock in the fucking morning. And I literally went, I saved the game and went, okay, Colonel, I'm going to go now. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to I bed. remember the, uh, what was it that got me the most, um, I'm pretty sure it was when um, I couldn't – because I rented Metal Gear Solid 1 when it came out, and it was on the – they re-released it, and they called it Twin Snakes for the GameCube. So okay, it was, yeah. like, not the ideal version or the way to play the game. But I can't remember how they dealt with – because there's this one thing where you have to, like, look at the manual, which has a codec uh, yeah. code. So you call in and then talk to the master, your master, who is totally not actually um, liquid. He's totally not actually liquid. It's fine. Um, but, um, yeah, I can't remember what they did, but it was, like, something like look in the manual. And I rented the game, so there was no manual. So I was like, fuck, how the fuck am I supposed to figure this out? And, like, eventually, after enough time, like, like Ming, uh, uh, I think her name is uh, Mei Ling. Yeah, Mei Ling. She's like, you know, Snake, there's this thing called the Internet. And, and I was just like, fuck you, game. You're making me look up a guy. Like, god damn it. Like, I don't think they actually said it, but they said it like, you know, there's this thing, you know, oh the internet. God. And I'm just like, Jesus You got fuck. trolled by a game. Awesome. That's your. That's probably your first trolling experience via game. Um. <laughs> oh, man. No, it was Eternity, Eternal Darkness Sanity's Requiem, which also oh, for the Eternal game, was my first Darkness. trolling game. Uh, no. 
Speaking of a game that could use a remake, holy shit! Yes! That's a great one! Oh my god! Fuck, dude, like, I will never forget, as long as I live, the 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 bathtub scare yeah. scared the shit out of me. Um, I also played it on the original, so instead of it being in sepia tone, it was actually, like, fucking RGB blood just, like, in your face. I was just like, what the fuck? Right. My little, like, 13-year-old brain nearly, like, exploded. Um, but it was the, one of the sanity things that messed up was, like, it was, it showed, like, someone turning the volume down. But the thing was, is I was like, ah, gotcha, game, because my TV didn't turn down the volume in that way. It yeah. had, like, it showed a very generic, like, TV setup that, like, wasn't mine. Mine had a weird one. My old CRT had, like, a weird setup. Yeah. So, it like, I was like, ah, that's fake. I got you. But then right after that, I got a sanity thing where the game, it just turns, it, it just flips, it turns off, mm -hmm. but it doesn't turn off, it's still on. And I thought my game crashed, and I reset the fucking GameCube, not realizing it was a sanity thing, and lost all my progress in that story. Oh, that I was no. And I was just sitting there, because I was like, wait, the light was on, and then the light turned off. But I, like, did it so quick, I was like, fuck, like, god damn it, it reset. So I, like, reset oh, it. No. And I was like, and I was like, you fucking game, like, oh, God. Oh, that, that hurts. Personal experience, and it was it was rough. Oh. Bad game, fuck me, man. Oh my god. <laughs> With that uh, enterprising story, we're gonna take a real short break and uh, come right back to you with just some more interesting and rambly stories because we don't know what we're doing today at all. We have no fucking idea. Just like, yeah, just like we have no fucking idea what we're talking about. We have no fucking idea. Yeah what we're talking about. <laughs> See you guys soon. <laughs> <laughs> See you after the break. <laughs> Greetings, friends, here at the Break of the Name Not Found podcast. Uh, as you can see, this podcast is well on its way to going off the rails. It's like 3 a.m. here. I forgot to record a break. I had already edited the whole podcast and just realized I was about to upload it and realized that I hadn't done a break. I'm very tired, and I've been listening to this podcast. It, trust me, it goes even farther off the rails, like maybe like five minutes in. Yeah, just about that. Just about five minutes from after this break. It'll go seriously off the rails. But uh, I just want to remind everyone to uh, share the show. If you really enjoy it, be sure to like, comment, subscribe to the channel. We are going to produce some new things. Uh, they're in production right now. It's going to take a few days to edit things out. But it should some stuff should be coming up sometime next week. Um, if you follow me on Twitter, at DefUnstable, uh, you'll find out more. You can follow Colin at Hey I'm Bad with two Ds. Um, otherwise, I hope you enjoy the show. Please like, comment, subscribe. Uh, let us know what you want us to talk about. We're just kind of talking to each other about nothing, but if you guys give us something, we'd really like to have a community to have a dialogue with. So, if you enjoy the show, let us know. We would love to hear from you guys, and share it with your friends, because the more people that join our community, the better off it'll be, because we're just gonna have fun together. So, uh... Once again, follow me on Twitter at DevOnStable, follow Colin at Hey I'm Bad, and uh, like, share, subscribe, all that nonsense. It's ti I'm very, very tired and going to begin slurring in a minute, so I'm going to go to bed. So uh, let's get back to the show. Oh, welcome back to Map Found. I'm 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 Chris. Uh, and I'm Colin, motherfuckers! And this is what Woo. I'm dealing with right now. Um, hey, 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 uh, hey, what did we talk about? No abuse, I've had a rough day, alright? <laughs> I, need, I need verbal hugs. Uh, I don't know how those, well, or what that noise is. Well, you can but, trust on you know. a voice actor to give you verbal hugs. And speaking of voice acting, uh, 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 oh, yes. Speaking of that, what a fucking segue. Oh, hey. my. God. It's easy because oh. it's my job. <laughs> you just. <laughs> uh. yeah, so we were talking about there's this Kevin Hart bit, by the way, 
that he talks about his, I think it's his oh, uncle. Oh, man. And he goes, say it with your chest. And it, it, it just becomes a thing. I didn't know if it was whiter for me to do the bit, but I realized it's whiter for you to explain the bit. Listen, so now that we've gone no, there. No, it's okay. It's okay. We're, we're going we're gonna, to we're, we're gonna explain. Dude, we're gonna we explain all the there? jokes. That's what we do here, okay? Um, excuse me, Wait. sir. Um. No, yes. no, I don't, I, I don't, I, <laughs> but, uh, I don't want to. What, what I wanted to talk about on our <laughs> second half of the show is actually, um, and this isn't a plug for myself, but this is more of a, I, I want to talk about voice actors, uh, in, in, specifically in games, and you can go into animation a little bit, because there are, a lot of them are interconnected, um, but one of those things of, I've been passionate and loved them since I was six, I, ever since I figured out that you could do this, like this was a person, I was like, yes, um, so I, I I would ask is like, is there anyone you can think of, or and if you can't think of the person, I'll look it up. But uh, uh who in your mind was that voice that you heard, uh, in, in a game? You're like, dear sweet Ooh. God, like like that was Damn. so good. I, I you know what? It's it's really cliche, but what I mean, we were just talking about him. Uh, by proxy, fucking David Hater, man. Oh, David yeah. Hater, he, he, that voice is so iconic. And I was really upset when they brought in, um, what's his name? What's his, oh God, uh, Jack, Jack Bauer. Bauer. God. Um, um, so, uh, you have the internet. Jack make, make it happen. Uh, Keeper Sutherland. Keeper, yeah, Keeper Sutherland. Keeper I Sutherland. was almost there. I just pressed enter. Okay, you beat me to it. Yes. Let's, let's go, brain. <laughs> but the, this is. Like, oh my god, like, that just, that just blew me away. Um, I think other voices that, um, really resonated with me, honestly, who, do you know who voices are in, in Final Fantasy X? Because Final Fantasy X was the first fully voice acted, and at least to my memory, fully voice acted, um, RPG that I played. I might, I think Skies might have had full, no, they had voice, v, uh, v, uh, FMVs. Uh, but it wasn't, like, fully voiced. Like, there were definitely cutscenes with, like, just text dialogue as well. And, I mean, I know FF10 has it as well, but it's, like, almost... His name voiced. is Matt <laughs> McKenzie. Matt McKenzie. He has been in Princess Mononoke. Uh, let's see. I'm, I'm trying to look for stuff that he we would know him from. God, he's... Oh, he, he's just got a voice actor's thing, Land. It's just, like, all this stuff. And I'm like, oh, God. Um... And we don't, and I couldn't, you know, it's funny, I mean, it's just like, you know, what we talked about with uh, um, DiMaggio's flick, uh, you know, I know that voice, like, you wouldn't be able to pick them out of a lineup, of DiMaggio, but like, that was he a... plays Waka, by the way. Um, I knew, I knew DiMaggio played Waka. I did not, actually. Uh, um, it's really funny, because I looked through all of his credits after, it was him, and I think, uh, who's the guy who voices Fry? Who's, uh, what's his name? Billy He's, West. Billy West. Billy West. So it was him and Billy West on the Nerdist, and after that I looked through all of their credits, and I was like, I didn't realize, no, it blew my fucking mind, is that DiMaggio is Marcus Phoenix. That, like, floored yep. me, because they just don't, it just doesn't click in my head that they are the same, oh, yeah. and I thought they just got some guy, but I'm like, oh my god, that's so well, cool. What got the me the same thing, it was the Nerdist podcast, like, the Nerdist podcast, but it was Maurice LaMarche and Robert Paulson. Anybody who doesn't know who those uh, two people are. Uh, 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 Fucking Paulson, dude. He's oh, anybody who doesn't know who those two people are, okay, is Robert Paulson plays fucking Pinky, and Maurice LaMarche plays the Brain. Also, Rob Paulson plays Yakko, and he plays like everybody else in animation. He's nuts, and he's kind of my like inspiration as as far as anything goes. So, Robert Paulson is nuts. Every time I hear the countries of the world, I'm like, this man is a fucking genius. <laughs> Country of the World is, like, one of the best vocal performances I've yeah. ever heard in my entire life. And I'm, like, And he has it including, fucking memorized, motherfucker. Like, he just does it. Yeah, I know. He just, like, I, I'm including my, my opera grades, my, you know, my Luciano's. Yeah. Um, you know, my, my, all my, all my other voice stuff. Like, so Chris is a voice actor. I studied classical voice for, in college, and I sang professionally for a while as well. So, like, my background is, like, not, I would not say similar in terms of that, but, like, I have, like, a sort of understanding of, like, this other side of, like, vocal use and performance, which is why, which is why I probably love, um, some of the music in games so much. Like, when a game can really get that oh, score yeah, right, it's why I'm uh, oh, 
I just get so invested. In what's Absolutely. Going on. Um, I think for me, uh, people that always stand out at, whenever they do it. A, I uh, love Steve Bloom. Steve Bloom is Steve Bloom. Okay, he is. So okay, I know Steve Bloom is Spike Spiegel. What has he done in games besides? I know we did uh, Wolf Among Us, well, right? We talked about that. To before. be fair, I mean, uh, what hasn't he done? He actually has. Uh, f- I think it was 2012, had Guinness Book of World Records for most video game appearances in, uh, in really? for voice acting. I mean, I'm, I'm, I didn't know I'm that. going down this list right now. I mean, not just for, and it's not just video games, it's all his stuff, but I mean, uh, from additional voices, I mean, he is in Mighty Number no. 9, he's uh, General Krang in uh, Ninja Turtles game. Like, he's in so many different things. But let me see if I, like, Steve Bloom... Uh, I I don't remember most, but you just know his voice when you hear it. Of all uh, video game voices, uh, let's check it. And let me be very clear: Steve Bloom is all the reason why I know him is is that is the best dub of any anime ever made. Cowboy Bebop's dub is oh, the best uh, dub of any. That anime. I said. Well, the, the only two that are comparable Mexican. that are comparable is that or Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood. Those two are like. Ooh, 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 very true. Very true. Yeah. Very true. That is a really good dub. Yeah. That is a good dub. I, I I liked, I liked the Japanese, um, you know, the onsens. I really I did, but like, damn, yeah, that was a good dub too. I mean, obviously, you know, growing up, I had Gundam Wing, I, which was another. Okay, Gundam Wing. When I watched it as a kid, was really great. Tried to watch an episode recently, didn't go well. I was just kind of like, what? He's hero is so emo. You just sort of had to roll with it. But duo. Duo Maxwell. Yeah. Once you get Ep- once yeah. Epion gets in the mix, you go, okay, I'm 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 in, I'm in now. But yeah, um, in your all right. He's got a whip. I guess I gotta fucking watch this shit. Right. God damn it. I mean, uh, but also the uh, one that always gets me. Uh, God, I, I just lost my thing. Uh, and I know they're also animation extras and well known, but um, it it just got me. Was fucking Mark Hamill, man. Okay, fucking Mark Hamill in Arkham City as the Joker. I know it's cliche to say, but I will argue. I love him in the animated series. I love him in all his other roles. But that role was a masterpiece. Just, it was literally, I, I from through to through, I, I didn't, I, like, don't get me wrong. Kevin Conroy was Batman, and Kevin Conroy is the voice of Batman. That's great. But <clears throat> the joke, he nails that. And I think, like, I, I, I don't disagree with you. I'm not, I'm not gonna, like, say, like, oh, it wasn't so much Mark Hamill, but I feel like to play a character that off the hinges, the the straight man, yes. for lack of a better word, is so important. Like, if you don't have that grounding, then it's just sort of someone screaming into the oh, void, absolutely. and it's not gonna have that same Did impact. Did you see the end credits where actually Mark Hamill sings as the Joker in the end? Like, the end credits? If you haven't, literally, uh, I don't remember the name of the song, but at the end credits of Arkham City... He sings a song uh, because, and this is spoilers, okay, I don't give a shit, because this game has been out for a while, but in Arkham City, he dies. Joker, I mean. Right. And, and right as he dies, at the end, it then goes into this sad song sang about friendship, basically as a uh, almost two lovers type of song, and it's like, a, oh my god, that's creepy as fuck. That's, oh my god. Like, right. That, and well, so good. That's sort of always been the thing. There's like a really famous like uh, independent comic that like g- goes into like the the fact that Joker and Batman are like made for each other. That's sort of the whole yeah. thing. Is like they're sort of intertwined in like the unstoppable force and the immovable object. Oh yeah. Sort of the, 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 the 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 imagery or not the imagery the um the metaphor or whatever. I, I'm wow. I am. I mean, brain not working. For not working. But I mean, also there's. You know, people, and then there's other smaller voice actors that that I love. That like you have your Matthew. Mer- that, I wouldn't say smaller. He, you have Matthew Mercer. He's not small at all. He's Matthew Mercer. Um, Leon, Resident Evil Four. Um, that. Oh, yeah. okay, yeah. Oh, here's here's one that definitely sticks out to me. As, as much as it was very affected in post production, I would argue the voice of Glados. And Lord help me, I don't know this voice actress's name, but that is one of the more iconic. Video game voiceover work. Hang on. I think was actually not a voice. She might have been an opera singer. Actually, if I remember this right. Ellen McClain. Yep, Ellen McClain is an opera. Ellen McClain, yep. 
Yeah, she's the fucking killer soprano. Holy shit, I didn't know yep. that. What the fuck? Yeah, that she is GLaDOS. That, yep. That makes me alive that much yep. better. Which also was written by, uh, Still Alive was written by, um, that guy Jonathan who does Colton. the stuff on... Jonathan Colton. Yeah, Jonathan Colton. He does the stuff on Wait, Wait, Don't Tell Me, and he is, like, super talented Absolutely. in terms of, like, writing songs But that's parodies. the thing. It, it, okay, I, this isn't just splurging on me, but one of the things I've always loved about voice acting, and, and I've only discovered how much I love it even more now that I'm doing it, okay, is because... Uh, and, I, and and just as a brief plug, I'm starting this new series of voice acting, like, introspectives and, and funny, fun things I'm going to talk about within voice acting, and it's really cool that then more that I delve into it, um, is that once you learn the complexity of the topic, because a lot of people are like, oh, get behind a microphone, do a character, and I'm like, that is not how it works. Like, the... the That's not how it no, works? Oh man, it, 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 it... I can't just go... Buy our shit, motherfucker! Yeah, yeah. Woo! I can't just do a Stop. silly voice. Happy. Yeah. Casper mattresses? You like Casper? <laughs> do you like uh, do you like fucking stamps.com? I like stamps.com. Like I what are the, the other big the, ones? Jerry uh, Squarespace. Jerry Square Square um, um, uh, Squarespace is uh, sponsoring this episode oh, yeah. of Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> I wish. Oh boy. Are we, are we, are we in trouble? No, no. no I, I, like I, that's the thing, like, um, and I, I, for, for any field, you know, I realize this, like, the further up I've gotten in, you know, working in what I do and talking to other people who do things that are completely separate from me. I have, like, a very basic understanding, and then it sort of has dawned on me, like, oh, oh there is so much more to this. Just like I complain about people not understanding how there's so much more to Smash or how there's so much more to Street yeah. Fighter, how there's so much more to Speed, thing, you know, like, and, and I'm like, oh, uh, and that's, those are kind of, you know, uh, uh, juvenile examples, but I feel like it, it's pertinent to how deep you can go and how intricate this art form is, like, or any any profession or any skill set, right. you know? Right, and, 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 and obviously, like, th there's complexities to everything. It's just that, like, I, I, I've become kind of this obsessed. Like, do you know who Travis Willingham is? You ever heard of him? No. Okay, he is Roy Mustang in, in Out for My Lazarus. He's just Roy Mustang in that. Oh. Uh, and he's also in endless amount of games. Like, he's in Halo 5. He's in a whole bunch of stuff like that. Uh, and I had the utmost pleasure of meeting Mr. Willingham. Um, and, uh, oh, and I, I, But it was one of these things of, like, uh, you it, – and it, it's the thing that started me on this track and, and brought this topic into my head because this happened rather recently is that I met him – and and I got to see like I think I'm I'm uh, look I, I'm not being narcissistic about it. I think I'm okay okay at what I do and I'm like sitting there and then you see someone like that walk into a room okay and then he does what he does and does it eff something that would take me like time to figure out just snap and I'm just like Jesus Christ these people are amazing like and and also like and this is uh, it's not even video games but it's one of these things of like in games. We don't realize how much work goes into them just from a voice perspective. Like, yes, there's other things and other details, but, like, there are – there's the dialogue. There's the effort noises, which is the yells, the grunts, the everything. You know, there there's the individual dialogue pieces. There's monologues you have to come in for pick – there's, like, tons of stuff that these people have to go back and do. And I don't – like, I think that people get excited when they hear their characters, but I don't think people appreciate enough how much good voice acting brings to the table of a game, Right? You know, because I argue, and this is my ultimate argument. I love Last of Us. Okay, I, I, I think like, no, okay, I take that back. I said before I dislike Last of Us, and this is this. I, and I could go for days. Uh, no, no, we're no, gonna no, we're fight not, about we're not gonna this. fight about this. We're not gonna fight about this. Okay. Oh man, I want well, to fight well, about well, this. Well, we're not gonna like really, really fight. I just made my point. Is I dislike Last of Us. I recognize it's a great story. Okay, it's just not my type of game. And I hate I, – I just dislike anything that's zombie quotation mark based. And I'm just kind of like, – I'm over this shit. I'm over it, okay? That's just what I am. I, I, I'm over all – everything that has to do with it. All but, right, all but right, all right, the all thing right. I, say, I disagree. I, I understand that you disagree. But here's, the, here's my point is that I argue, okay, that if it wasn't Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson, okay, doing what they do, okay, that – and they didn't do it as well as they did it. That game wouldn't be even seventy, even like thirty percent as good as good as it is. Okay, because look, I I that I agree yeah. with, a hundred percent. Yeah, because here's the thing: gameplay, everything else about that game, I, the writing's great. Writing's great. Everything else about the game, 
is just Uncharted, okay? That is literally, it is the gameplay of Uncharted, different setting, different writing, different kind of overall kind of art style. And then it, that's how it plays. It's, it's very different thematically, but I think mechanically, since it's Naughty Dog, it probably uses the exact yeah, same absolutely. engine. So, and it's one of these things of like, oh, it's a great game. I'm like, no, 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 no. It's, it, it has nothing to do with the game. It has to do with the writing and the acting. That is what makes Last of Us Last of Us. Nothing else. Because Last of Us has a good baseline of a solid engine, and then it built this masterpiece on top of it. That's what it did. Okay? And... And that's the kind of point I make is a lot of people be like, oh, it was this or this. I'm like, no, nah, nobody. There are some games where that's Okay, the case, so I, 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 okay, I don't disagree with you, but I think a thing that a lot of people overlook, and it's what I was talking about before with Nintendo, is I think that, yes, without the performances that we got from Troy Baker and Ashley Johnson, you don't have Ellie and Joel the same way we have Ellie and Joel. And that is the centerpiece of that story. I don't think many people would disagree with that. But what I think The Last of Us does well, and what I argue, and the reason why I say it is a good game, not just a great like story on top of a shitty game, is that they use tension, they build scenarios around the theme of the game in terms of tension, lack of like items, and like the way in which they build the gameplay that matches thematically with the story, which is not, it's hard, that's hard, like that's not easy, like I, anybody who's played Last of Us can tell you the moment when you get thrown down in the basement with all the clickers and they're chasing after you and you have to, you know, run the generator is, like, one of the most tense moments because you're away from Ellie and you're, like, trying to figure shit out. And, like, what they do with Uncharted, which you can argue they do better in certain instances and less so in others, is it's fast-paced. It's the action sequence of the action movie. And, like, you're constantly moving and doing things like that. And it's another reason why... Games like Resident Evil are so lauded. Some segments of Resident mm. Evil, we can use like four, one, and the most recent seven as an example, building the gameplay to go around the story. So Resident Evil 4, slightly more action than the original Resident Evil, which was so clunky and like hard to move around. And the camera angles were purposely made so that you couldn't get all the information. Arguably so the first build... Resident Evil had horrible voice acting, by the way. Like, I'm just pointing that out. Oh, no, no. Oh, God, are you kidding me? Huh, that looks like a Jill sandwich. Or it just goes, like one of the Jill, or, did you hear them yell? Uh, it literally, it was literally them going, uh, uh, and I was like, uh, and I was like, uh, what? like, that was actually when I went to, uh, like, classes and acting classes for voiceover, for voiceover and stuff. That was the example they give of, this is what not to do in voice acting, just literally. That's pretty good not to do. I mean, you just showed the full opening cutscene to Resident Evil 1, and it's just like, like oh, no. Uh, no it's... I'm Alex Wesker. <laughs> Look, I don't, I don't disagree with you. I'm totally not evil. Like, I don't di yeah, I don't disagree with you. I, 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 I think that what I'm saying is that, like, it, okay, is I think that gameplay, it, yes, it's an important part, depending on the genre you're in. With a game like Uncharted or a game like that, yes, gameplay is kind of important, but it's secondary to what I'll call, I guess, cinematography, story, and acting. Um, unlike a game like, uh, I guess, when you're in a more action-y style game, yes, gameplay is very, very important. Or, or a platformer. Yes. Meat Boy doesn't need a fucking story. No. You're Meat Boy. You gotta save Bandage Girl. Go fucking oh, yeah, do absolutely. it. Like, you know, that's just it's all about the gameplay. I, I just think that sometimes, it's, yes, they get, like... You don't see, like, the seven guys who do all these different voices, like, for these, like, all these little characters, like, um, like, fucking Phil Lamar plays Vamp. He's Vamp. Like, that's who he is. Like, the, the, yeah, huh. in Metal Gear Solid? Yeah. That's Phil Lamar? That's Holy Phil fucking shit. Lamar, man. That, like, like, he, and he's, you wouldn't know it, man. He's doing, no, also in Pulp Fiction, and he's Samurai Jack, but still. Um, it's one of the best scenes in, in, in Pulp Fiction ever. I'm sorry. Just say what again. Say what again. <laughs> <laughs> so fucking good. What? I always forget that's Phil Lamar. It's the guy who gets his yeah. brain splattered all over the back of uh, the, oh, the Camaro yeah. or whatever. Yeah, and, but 
and, and, and obviously we're we're getting towards the, the we're getting towards the final like 15 minutes or so. This is where we slowly start to go off the rails, and I'm totally cool with it. But it, it's actually funny how <laughs> we've been in this for like you know this is seven episodes. We have already slowly developed a pattern here. Like the last. Ten <laughs> I mean, you know, it's more like how our conversations go, where we say I don't disagree, but fuck your face, <laughs> and then you just like we just go off and like. Okay, podcast name. I don't disagree, but fuck your face. All right, great. Um, no, 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 but, uh, no. no. Yeah, that, that's I, gonna I be the exit like... line today. That's gonna be the end Yay! line for the podcast today. By the way. Um, but <laughs> uh, no, I, I know, actually I know, I know. ended. It's so adorable. It's so it's cute because so we do. And my name is Colin, and my name is Chris, and this has been named yet. Is that the Yon, Muppet Babies or, version you know. of this podcast? Is that, is that what's happening right now? Hey man, man. Muppet Babies had a very deep, <laughs> engaging, persuasive, and really challenging narrative yeah. for its time, and not understanding what it is to be a baby, and only to realize that you need to grow up into what you will be, which is, you know, important, a, a Muppet, you know, a, a, a puppet, a, a mask, you know, that is, is so... It is such a pervasive um, idea in our society, and you know we really have to respect it for, for what it do, did. Do 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 tell more. I'm gonna um, keep letting you do this. Go for it. Go for it. Oh, fuck! I'm I'm <laughs> <that dumb. laughs> I I squeezed that bit already for too long, and then I was like, Jesus, am I still in this bit? Dude. Like in my head while doing the bit, I was like, Jesus, I am I still in this you, bit? This is why and it was like, this, yes, keep talking. This is how I was. I knew it was like. I'm going to pull a dick move here. It's like, I could help him out here, but I want to see how far he gets right now. I want to see how far he gets right now. I'm really interested in that. Oh, man. I could have, I, you know, I, I didn't push myself enough. That's what I'll take from today's improv classes. I didn't push myself enough on the Muppet Babies bit. That could have been a real big thing, and, you know, I really should have trusted my instincts and kept going with it. So. My, I, I can't remember for the life of me remember the name of my uh, improv teacher. But, uh, like, the, I only took a few because she wasn't that great. Um, but uh, I took other ones with Leela. Leela's awesome, by the way, if she ever hears this. Um, because she'll kick my ass. Uh, but the, uh, the... I remember my old one. Whenever I hit, uh, at the end of every improv, I, okay, now let's take inventory. And then let's talk about what we can do better. <laughs> I'm like, I will fight you right now. Like, don't you pull this guidance <laughs> counselor, you know, artsy-fartsy bullshit on me right now. And the funniest part is like I I uh, <laughs> I just imagined okay, and this is a this is a family story, but uh, this is a family story. I imagine that being said, and for some reason I imagined your mom, who anyone doesn't know, fantastic teacher, lovely woman, um, teach the arts, yep. and uh, I imagine her hearing that because of all the conversations me and her have had about acting and stuff like that. I imagine her just rolling her eyes and shaking her head next to me because. She she has the best. Oh my god, my uh, the one thing that she she can, is so fucking deadpan. Like the deadpan humor is just. She is a very bubbly Midwestern woman who lives in New Jersey and is like wouldn't if, you wouldn't if expect it. If your mom it, just started like, the saying the word humor. y'all, it would fit perfectly. I'm sorry, just that's it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but but also not because that's but no, yeah no, no her yes, mentality I, I, yes. fits the word oh come on in y'all like right, that type of thing right. she's nicest right, lady in the right. world oh hi yeah. <laughs> no um she would uh she would just do she wouldn't do the eye roll she'd do a stare and she would just say okay moving on and just like just totally like just miss whatever the dumb thing yep. that myself yep. My sister, my dad, yep. like anybody who's like being said, and like I find it hysterical now, but like I can totally imagine. Oh yeah. Her. Uh, uh, yeah. No, 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 we're not doing that. <laughs> just like, like uh, no, but on that, that, on that tangent, like there's just ah, uh, there's so many funny stories. There are those people. Just to, I'm, I'm completely derailing this now because the, the, I don't care. But the thing is, is that there are, because I, I took a lot of classes to, to be like, okay, I'm not just going into this to be like, fuck it, I can do it. I'm like, no, I'm going to, I'm going to learn and I'm going to actually do this stuff. Cause I had a performance background and stuff, but I didn't have an acting background. Um, and right. And I wanted right. to learn about that. And God, I had some, I have, you know, some really good teachers. And then there are ones that I go like, you are one step away from a beret. And I swear to God, if you put it on, I'm out. I'm out, man. Like, this is just like, and, and it's, the, it's the, it's just like when they're talking about, uh, like, uh, but 
we are creating art here. I'm like, okay, okay. You make my brain hurt. It's like I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be respectful for you. I paid money to listen to you, but <laughs> well, we're creating, we're creating art here. I'm like, yeah, I'm creating art here. But I said, when I said member of FDIC. Like, that is art, okay? When I'm reading commercials <laughs> that say, uh, apply liberally to your armpits. And I'm, that's, okay, that's art. All right. That's it, art, it yeah. It, it, it's arguably, art that pays the fucking bills, baby. That is, don't get me wrong, there are people who do that, like, really well for a living, and that is art in certain ways. But when you say, it's like, just make make love to the words. That was a thing I, 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 I was told, <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> yeah, make love to the words when I said, come on down for a sale. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know why, but I just imagine you. This is so bad. Or this, is, this, is, this is it. This is where yeah, we're going yeah. now. Is I just imagine you just mounting yourself on the bug, being like, is this right? <laughs> Am I doing this right? And just like hunched over on it. Top of the and microphone, you're like looking on the around. Microphone, like, yeah. No, but a giant bubble word, the. <laughs> Not a mic, just the word, the. Just you being like, am I doing this right? I don't feel okay. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not feeling the same space. I don't feel right. There's no. I want to get home. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Oh, my God. It's 100% out of control. Okay. That happened. Oh, I boy. Completely just, I, I think we're going to end it on with me making love to an, um, to an actual sentence. That is exactly the image we're going to give yeah. our, our listeners. Yeah. Um, so, this has been the Name Not Found podcast. I'm Chris. And I'm Colin. And as, and as always, and as always, we don't know what the fuck we're talking about. I don't about. know how to speak properly. <laughs> I respectfully disagree and fuck your face. Ha <laughs> <laughs> God! Play the after music. <laughs>